I'm comedian Anthony Rodia. I'm a Papa Rodia. You're watching the Growing Up Italians podcast. Check it out. You're, oh, so you're a junior. When's the last time anyone called you Antonio? No, they call me Tony. Okay. Tony, okay. Tony or Todon? Antonio, they call me... They call Todon. Me in Italy, they call me Todon. Todon. It's like when you sign a name, you got to sign Antonio. Antonio. Uh, obviously, yes. This is going to be retarded. Wait, <laughs> this is so you're a junior. Be... Elvis, huh? Huh? You're yeah, I'm not a junior because I got a middle name. I got my grandfather's uh, name. Thank God it wasn't my first name. What's your grandfather's name? Armando. Armando. My whole name sounds like name? something from like Telemundo. Yeah. Antonio, Antonio Armando, Armando Rodilla. Rodilla. <laughs> yeah. you know it's like Armando because Samo do Gigante. It sounds, it sounds like uh, it sounds like the main character in a soap opera. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So funny. No, it's in the puta novela mega. This week on Samo do Gigante, Antonio Armando Rodilla. <laughs> and it's bad enough that my last name, we got to talk about that. My last name means kneecap in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was spelled R O D I L L A, like dudes are, in, dudes are in Mexico right now going, yeah, I'm getting get a Rodilla replacement. <laughs> that's, We're rolling, by the way, guys. That's, oh, what, awesome. it that's oh. what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Rodilla. 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 Right, they, they, they pronounce it Rodilla. That's, yeah, that's the two only L's one in New York State, no? What? The, that's the only name in New York State. Rodia? No, there's a lot of names in New York State. They have different last names. I never knew that before. In New Jersey, they got some of them. So you're not trying to say it's the only name in New York State. You're trying to say it's I'm the only Rodia. New York, New York. Right, only Rodia in New York State. Yeah. It's not. I've met no, a lot New of them. York. I've met a lot of them. They all come yeah. out of the woodworks now. I I get, now I get, you're yeah. famous. Hey, we might be cousins. 100%. Right? I'm like, find, all right, you're still paying for tickets. Connecticut, do you find some of it? Pennsylvania has a lot of them. Connecticut, yeah. Jersey, yeah. A lot of, it's yeah, they're from yeah, the same. Yeah. That name is from our town. Did you see that in Chicago too, right? Yeah. I see you find one in there too. Yes, I found one. So we got yeah. Papa Rodia in the building, who happens to be a huge growing up Italian podcast. He right? is. <laughs> he watches you guys more than he watches I me. Watch yes. guys, guys, he does. Love Every that. single day I I see it. <laughs> Where do you watch it on? Yeah, I would do. No, but you, what do you, you watch too? it on? Like, what do you watch it? What's that thing you watch it on? On the high pad. On the high pad. High pad. High pad. <laughs> so I want to. I want to. I don't know if it's just my family. That's what I know. Do you I'm realize? It's beautiful. I love it. That yeah. off the boat Italians, they could pronounce the letter H when it's not there. I can't, I, but I when don't it even is there, that, that when when it is H. there, they can't say it. Like I have a friend named Evan. Okay, he calls him. Heaven. <laughs> but then the iPad is the high pad. So I'm like, no, dad, his name is Evan. He goes, heaven. I go, stop saying the H. He goes, I can't. I, can't. I said, well, then say iPad. He goes, high pad. I go, what is wrong with you? But then, I, but then they can't pronounce the H. No. And it's like happy. Yes. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I pronounce the H. Okay. I don't understand. So say, that. I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm a very happy. Oh, you did uh, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Say, say, yeah. ho say holy. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> Say honey, honey. Oh, that's not bad. Honey, oh, honey, honey. Yo, dude, it's I just honey. got lightheaded. You can't do that. <laughs> my man just said honey, honey. Oh, oh, honey, long oh, like time. A, like at the other woods. Oh my I, god. What am I say? What did you say? No, I, you? Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> no, say Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein. I can't say. Calvin that. Klein. I cannot dude, say that. I've never heard him try to say only. Only. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Fuck. if he has to tell somebody he's the only one at some place? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, man, you gonna come over here? I don't I'm think the so, only no. one here. <laughs> I think nobody would talk and argue me, no. Nobody. I'm <laughs> the only one here. <laughs> yeah, and people just looking at him. <laughs> Dude, we went to Home Depot one time. Oh, oh my God. Wait, how do you say that one? Huh? Home Deep. Home, Home Depot. Depot. No, you don't. You say Home Deep. 
No, 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 no. Home Depot. No, but sometimes you say Home Depot. And, and I said, I mess it up. And I said, if you want something Home Deep, you got to go to Romantic Depot. <laughs> okay. That's it to me. That's the, the only mouth I have. Tony now Rukia. he says only fine. Okay. <laughs> That's the only mouth I have. Say so only. Honey. Holy mouth Wait, I have. And how, how long have you been in America? How old are you when you About came 43 in? 43 years. So how old are you when you came here? gets worse. Huh? How, 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 long, how old are you when you came here? I was 24 and a half. 24 and a half? Yeah. <laughs> For the years killing me. Which one? Which one? Both. What are you laughing at at 20 when oh, I said God. that? I've never heard someone count a half of the age unless they're like, <laughs> like seven. Six, yeah. Like my daughter says that. Dad, I'm seven and a half. I've never heard a grown man go, <laughs> I was 26 and a half. <laughs> My, oh, my, my birthday is in old. August. I came in February. I was, <laughs> I was 26 and a half. <laughs> Dude, so, so we go to Home Depot. Oh, I was like 14 years old, right? And some young kid comes up to help him. And he goes, <coughs> I'm going to die on his podcast. He goes, oh, me a paper towel. Oh, oh, when I got hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you're hearing it is on, but it's not on. I got way. it, I got it. Okay, got so it. the young kid comes out. And he goes, can I help you? Are you all right? Drink some he, water. he was looking around, right? So my father looked like he needed help. He goes, sir, can I help you look? Can I help you find some? He goes, yeah. Um, well, I need a big thing of cock. And I went, oh, my God. And a lady walked by. She was like, that's disgusting. And my father's like, what the hell is this a bitchy problem? And the kid goes, what, sir? He looked like he was being abducted. Yeah. And he goes, I need a cock. Where I find a cock? I'm like, Dad, I don't know what you're saying, but let's try to break it down. What do you need it for? He goes, what do you mean what I need it for? I got to do the tile in the bedroom. I said, oh, he needs cock. So he goes, oh, I also, whatever, 16. So I said, cock. He goes, oh, what you watch your mouth? Why are you fucking messing with the kid? I said, what are you talking about? Anthony, you said the cock. I said, that's the thing for the bathroom. No, the thing for the bedroom, it's a cock. You say the thing in magic caution between her legs. I said, no, you're this mixed a true, up. Is this a true story? I go, you're mixed up. He, so he goes, he goes, Anthony, you know your cousin from England? That's how he says it, Pichadillo. I go, oh my God, you're right, but that's because he has an accent. He goes, that's the way he say. He said, oh, oh, you want to come over here and touch my cock? I said, <laughs> okay, you have a point there, but stop asking for cock because they're going to kick you out of Home Depot. Cock. He hit you with a Uno reverse. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he just... he, and he goes, oh, yeah, that's right. You cousin from England got a heavy accent. Yeah, no, you have nothing. <laughs> you have no accent at all. Oh, dude. Well, we, we're here especially today to talk about <clears throat> New, New Year's resolutions. Do you know, you know what New Year's is? resolution is? What? You know what that is? What? So why are you nodding your head? Yes. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. Okay. Do you know what New Year's resolution is? How do you say it in Italian? Uh, re resolutione. A resolution. No, but it's a capodanno. I don't know. Proposity, right? You could say proposity, yeah. right? Proposity per anno nuovo. You like when I speak Italian? Buono Prosperity. Anno, buono, buono anno nuovo. Yeah. yeah, he loves it. Because when I was a kid, I would never speak to my his whole family's from Italy. Mm -hmm. You know, all of them. My grandparents, my uncles, whatever. And uh, every Saturday morning, dude, the phone would ring at seven o'clock. They're just having lunch over there. Seven o'clock, and we would hide. We yeah. would hide. We'd hear him or my mom pick, Pronto! Pronto! Hey! Pronto! And I'm like this. I'm like, they're on the phone with Italy. Go, go. And we Run! Run! Basically, <laughs> Anthony, come and speak to you, Anthony. You uncle. Oh, I'm like, yeah. oh, oh. I hated speaking Italian because I didn't speak it well enough. Yeah. So I would get on the phone. Pronto. Si. Ciao. Si. 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 Ciao. Si. That's it. That's all si. That's it. No, no. Mind. Yeah, io voglio. Yeah, io voglio. I uh, see. Si. No. See. Si. No. Okay. Ciao. And yeah. I would give the phone, and I'd sweat the whole time. Yeah. And my sister's like, I don't want to get on the phone. We hated it. So now when I speak Italian to me, he goes, you knew how to speak Italian all these years? You run when the phone would ring? I'm like, Dad, I was young. Okay. Because my whole family, no think you know. I told him, he know how to speak Italian. He's afraid. He's afraid. That's all he said. No, no, no. Yes, you I know, follow you know, Italian. My my sister. My fashcon. My fashcon. That's all I kept hearing. Are you, you remember my sister? You remember my brother? Uncle Reno? Yeah. And you remember? Zia Rosa? Yeah. Yeah. Zia Rosalba. Rosa, uh, Rosalba. I'm so, yes, I know my aunt and uncle. <laughs> you still have family you? there? Huh? You still have family there? I'm going to yeah. share family. Where, where yeah, are my, you guys from? My again? brother and my sister. Uh, Sarino. It's, uh, it's in the uh, province of Abolino. Okay. I'm, oh, see okay. my paisano, Lord. Yeah? Yes, nice. Yeah, close enough. Really? Where? Yeah. We're from Salerno. 
Oh, that's oh, right. Salerno. Yeah. I'm right in between. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. leaving Salerno. Yeah. Are we paisans or no? It's about 20 minutes away. Yeah. Yeah. Really? That oh, is? no. I mean, from Salerno, the city, yeah. But then we're like 30 oh, yeah, minutes. Oh, yeah. Mavada. It's like yeah. all Campania. By yeah, us. we're in the mountains. That's, it's the yeah, same exactly way. Thing? Yeah, yeah. We have more gold we're, probably like, we're probably like an hour away, realistically. I'm about 20 minutes away from Salerno city. Yeah. And we're, and we're, like, we're like 35, 40 minutes. Andretta. Uh, Andrieta is on the other side of uh, Avellino. Okay. But it's close. It's not far. It's about, about an hour away from my, where I live. Hey, dude, if you want to get directions from him. I'm at the first, the first uh, uh, town <laughs> with, uh, with the Avellino city. He gave me directions to go upstate. This is like before like oh, yeah. Waze <laughs> and MapQuest. So I'm driving upstate to go hunting for the weekend. Better tell him, but, uh, <coughs> but that one I said when the state trooper stopped at me, I want to show him the, my... Uh, you're going to tell the whole story? <laughs> no, You're no, going to tell him the one with the state Aro, trooper, the he stopped me, and then I said to him about the Bonaro, and then he said, you speed. I said, yeah, no, I'm not. He's tell him ma- that one. He's the one you just said? <laughs> he's a, he's a, I said to the state trooper, it's a mat, you want to see it? And he make it fun out of it. They have no idea what we're talking about, but I'll get into that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going up saying, he goes, you know how to get up here? I said, yeah, I think so. He goes, okay, when you get to the blue steel bridge with the red blinking light, to keep it go straight. I get to this bridge. The no, bridge is... Make left. The, I'll make a left. I'm sorry. <laughs> the bridge Come is on. green. I never said straight. The bridge is green, and the, and the blinking light is yellow. <laughs> so I go, this got to be the bridge. So I call him, Da, yeah, I'm at the steel bridge. Okay, what color? Green. Yeah, that's it. You said blue. Yeah, what's the difference? A whole new color. I said, and the light is red. You said yellow. He goes, okay, Anthony, how many bridges you think they got with the blinking light, the blinking light? I said, okay, just wanted to make sure. He goes, okay, now you're going to pass the school on your left. When you pass the school, pull into the school, make you turn, come back, and make you first right. I said, why don't you just tell me to make the left before the school? He goes, because you cannot see the school from the left. How are you going to know that's the left before the school? I said, <laughs> dumbest shit I've ever heard, but it makes perfect sense because I can't see the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he'll say, he'll point shit out. Then you're going to come to an intersection. There's going to be a hot dog truck to your left. There's going to be Cumberland Farm on your right. There's going to be a little pond on your left-hand side. When you come to that intersection... People go straight. Why don't you just tell me when to turn? It goes, because I want to make sure you're in the right area. If you don't see the Cumberland Farm, you're somewhere, oh, I can't help you. I'm like, hold. So I have everything written down. He makes me write everything down, keep straight. I cross it out. I just go an arrow pointing up. And I, I get there. He goes, you see, you find the direction. It's spot on. <laughs> so this is, what year was this, would you say? Oh, I had to be in my 20s, man. Because this was before Waze, MapQuest, so Map, and all that. Before MapQuest. It was around MapQuest. Yeah. OnStar? Huh? You remember OnStar? Dude, I remember printing out pages like to go out with my boys at night. Like somebody would have to sit shotgun and have pages of Matt's OS. That's a wild time, man. And they, then they would go, dude, I think this is the right. And we have to keep the radio down. You know, but then if like we had like, he's like, oh, we got 14 miles on the highway. Put the music up. And then as soon as we get yeah. close, he's like, dude, dude, lower, lower. I think, I think we're getting to the turn. Oh, you got to make this right. Yeah. Kids today don't know that, man. Bro, I, I use a GPS to come to work every day. Just yeah. to know, like. Yeah, because Waze will tell you where traffic is. Yeah. There's times I go against, like, he don't believe in Waze. He goes, which way you go? I said, Waze is telling me. And then I give you the right way. I'm like, you're not a satellite. Wait, talk, talk about coming here today, because I know you live upstate. You drove all the way to Long Island yeah. to come to Brooklyn. Bad weather, I know. Bad weather, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank my. you so much for being here. Guilt trip. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you got a nice no, new pickup, I heard, Let right? Let me tell you something. I said, yeah, God, fairly new. helping me <laughs> register my son because it was the rain was coming That's down. what he asked God oh for. Oh, my God. God, I never please. Seen the rain and stuff. Make me get to this podcast with my son, <laughs> please. I think God's got a lot more important you know what problems I said the first time? I said, the first time I said, I should have called my son and said, <laughs> Cancel yeah, you the could've. next time because let me tell you something. It was bad. No, it was bad. It was I bad. don't it believe was any bad. shit. But not that because it's bad. The weather, the people, they don't know how to drive. Yeah. Holy he's mackerel, not wrong. man. He's not wrong. Well, but you know what someone told me? Because Rock texted me and he's like, is everything good? I'm like, if I know Anthony and his dad, they'll be yeah. here. <laughs> oh, dude. So I had to. Oh, I go everywhere I can go with it. I, I had to emphasize it. with yeah, him. That's good. I said, that's good. Come to the house at 11. Because if I tell him late morning, he shows up at eight o'clock in the morning. Now, <laughs> we're getting the kids ready for school. I'm a very early bird. You know, yes, it's just it's I chaotic. Do. 
So I'm like, come late morning. Okay, I'll see you like 8 o'clock. No, 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 come at 11 o'clock. Oh, 10 to 15. 11 o'clock. I said, the kids got to go to school. Michelle's got something to do before that. 11 o'clock. Oh, Anthony, if I come what? at 10 minutes early, I'll sit in your driveway. Time I, was I said, I'm house. not going to make you sit in my drive. Just come at 11 o'clock. What time do you I show up? 10 minutes after 11. Yeah. He I'm probably sat outside. But <laughs> he probably proved the point. Come, yeah. come to Long Island. I don't find it too much of traffic. It was, it was a nice, yeah. you know, open. What's open your morning room? routine like? What time do you wake up? Let me tell you something. Last night, because I have to get up early, I don't even sleep last night because of my house. It was 120 degrees in that fucking house. It was yeah. hot? Why? Fire pit? Oh, you, oh, you can't curse. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, because when I light up the stove, I I pack the stove in with five pieces of wood, and then I close it up. Okay, so light up the stove oh translates into the furnace, right? The fireplace. Yeah. yeah. He puts the fireplace on. That's how he heats the entire house. I can't. So it can't be regulated. Because my house is the seal is low. <coughs> it. Huh? Yeah. Dude, you house. sleep in this house. It's so cozy. But when he puts wood, and if it's going to be a cold night, dude, I've woken up Where? sweating. S- Pouring sweat. sweat. I got yes. the window open. I got my head sticking out the window. It's 10 degrees outside. My eyebrows are getting frosty. And I'm, he goes, yo, I'm closing the window. I get a chill. Chill. I'm medium well right now. I said my ass <laughs> is smoking. Maybe because of the age. I think I think even the the, the you know the, the little aspect of my blood then. That's yeah. maybe it makes you change. cold. It changed. <laughs> no, it, it makes you yeah, the, the blood is a little cold. Yeah. You, you blood now, last night I have to put my fan on it right behind my bed. You I said you you, you said all. you take aspirin to make to for your blood tin. Yeah. To You're thin out your tin. blood. Yeah. Okay. Tin the blood. And now people watching, I'm not making fun of my father. My father has a great sense of humor. He likes breaking balls. He breaks them too, but right now he's playing the victim. Because I get people in my pocket. I get people in my pocket. Leave your father alone. I feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for him. He's got a great life. I take care of my dad. He understands. He comes to shows. He waves at people like he's on a parade float. He's fine. But as the oldest, I'm starting to learn at you know 43 years old how to dissect what he says. Like I said, Dad, listen, when your pickup truck is up on lease, I can either buy it out for you or you could take my pickup truck. I rarely use it. I just use it for The one with season. the loud horn? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the train horn and everything. Oh, my God. <clears throat> he goes, I cannot get into you, pickup truck, because you got to lift the high up in the air, <laughs> and I can my leg, I got a static. I know he meant sciatica, but not everybody knows that. <laughs> to him, he got a static. I said, it's sciatica. That's what I say. No, you didn't say that. You said static. So, that, I mean, to me, you either have to get better cable reception or you got to get an iron. I said, because you have static. So people are like, oh, stop teasing your father. I said, dude, I love the old school Italian. This is dying out. It is not this right here, This right here is a dying breed. The accents, you know, the, the, the immigrants that came here. The work <clears throat> ethic. Listen, I'm first generation. My kids are second generation. Their kids are going to be, soon this is going to die out. You know what I mean? You don't have that influx of immigrants from Italy and Ireland and Argentina and Poland and, and coming over, you know, Portugal. So it's nice to be able to, to still keep this alive through my skits and my videos. Mm -hmm. And I hate when people are like, oh, you're making fun of the Italian heritage. No, I'm not, dude. I laugh at myself. I laugh at other. It's keeping it alive in comedy. And I I hate the people that don't understand that. treat each other like that. Um, You know, like a friendship, like a father and son. Yeah, now we do. I'm I'm gonna not get offended. People think, oh, leave your father alone because you offend your father. You got no respect. No, it's not true. Right, but I got hit as a kid when I didn't understand what you were saying. Uh, <laughs> it happens. It happens. I'm, 100, 100, 100, I'm 100% Italian. It's not. Well, we're actually going to you know, test you on not that. Not like, oh, I'm born here, or, or I got hey, an accent. Pa- 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 Papa Rodia, me and Rocco got some questions ready for you to yes, see. Yes, no problem. To see if you're Italian. Nah, you said 100%. Is it okay if you could answer these questions? Could you yeah. imagine if you gave uh, him like an Ancestry.com okay, and he came I back mean, at like right, 88% yeah, yeah, Italian? No. It would crush his world. Yeah. Right. Right. Dad, you're 12% Argentinian. That's your bullshit. <laughs> no offend to me. Go ahead, Rock. Ask him the first question. Nobody's 100% though. Nobody. Nobody's 100%. No. Yeah. No, we yeah. all got a little bit no, of No, no, no. He's saying nobody's 100%. So I'm 100%. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, no we're way. Gonna, we're going to ask, you, you, gonna gonna ask you some questions. I'm find born out. and raised in Italy. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What? Because Grandpa Nonno could have, you know, he, he could be from, he could have something else in him. No, not could have been from Greece and went right. to Napoli. Yeah, and they, yeah. they, 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 might have, they might have not have told you. You could be 20% Greek. 
Shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know what he's thinking. Rocco, Rocco has some questions for you. He doesn't want to say, but I know what he's thinking. <laughs> I'm an old <laughs> Greek. <laughs> 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 I'm an old Greek. Yeah, I'm an old Greek. But why? Greeks are good people, no? Great people. I don't care. <laughs> Dude, See, I know who I, I am. See, by him it. saying I don't care, that means yeah, they're good. But I you don't know, come off like that. I know yeah. who I am. I know where I come from, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, good job. I yeah, good luck with that. What, what I got to lie right. for? So I'm go ahead, Let, Rob. First, first question. Go ahead. All right, Papa Rodia. You said you're 100 percent Italian. Yes. Let's test it out. You ready? Yeah. What year was Italy unified? What is that? <laughs> what year was Italy unified? If you're 100 percent Italian, you should know that. What, the, uh, they they were unified. They came. You no, know, there was the kingdoms of two Sicilies. There was northern Italy, southern Italy. What year did they come together? Take a know. guess. I don't know that. Give me Take a guess. guess. Your son what knows. Year? Anthony knows it. What year? Nineteen. No. <laughs> what? Hundred years back. It's eighteen hundred. Right, but eighteen what? Take a guess. Eighteen uh, fifty-three. Oh, that's close. It's close. close. Not there. 1861. Oh. Yeah, everybody knows that. So I don't know. That's the first time I hear. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. How many regions are there in Italy? I don't even know this. <laughs> take, take a guess. I mean, for someone that's a hundred percent Italian, <laughs> take a guess. I know I, I, because I never hear this thing. So I just want to let you guys know, I'm getting my ass kicked when I get in the truck. <laughs> Why are you putting me on the spot? You know I don't I go to school. I never hear this thing. I was a yeah. do chestnut farmer when I was a young kid. <laughs> so guess what how many regions? Guess. Take a guess. I don't even know what the regions is. Regions of Italy, different regions. Just so you got Campania, Basilicata, right. Sicily. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Take a guess. Uh, Basilicata, Campania, Puglia. Asi Puglia Julia. is a three, four. Sicily, five. Just take a guess. Take a guess. Uh, let, him try to, let him try to add up yeah. the regions. Right? Uh, Rome, Milan. It's going to be... Let's see, 20? Oh, we got it right! Let's go! I figured it out. I figured it out. I have to head it off. I cannot use the jump. When you say jump, you say how high. You know, you gotta give me time. You cannot put me on a lightning round. Make me jump. That was good. That's good. Good. That's exactly 20. Now, if he would have got it wrong, if he would have said 18, no, it's 20. Why you guys don't give me time to head? <laughs> I, mean, you know, I miss, Rome, I miss Rome, it too. Rome is in Lazio. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I got another God. one for you. Two more. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys are killing me. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Who was the first Roman emperor? You better get this. Uh, you better get this. Yes. Leo, hey, give him a chance. Give him a chance. Let him think. Julio Cesare. No. Leo, Leon is it. Yeah, my no. You got to get this. What month were you Nerone. born? Nerone. What month were you born? Ninth, August 15th. <laughs> the month. August 15th. Amazing. The, okay, qual- August 15th is a date. You were, you were born in August. Well, you were born in August, too, huh? Yeah. yeah. Nice August 15th. Hey, hey, no, I, I, I said the answer in that thing. My sister's August 11th. I'm August 13th. He's August 15th. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm a 15th, yeah. So who's, who's the emperor? Augusto. Uh, Ferragosto. Who's Think the, about who's that. The, who's the emperor? The Ferragosto, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Augustus. You can't just repeat what he said. No, no Augustus. That's Augustus. Augustus. That's the Augustus. best. The best okay. uh, in Agosto. Okay. Right. But Agosto means the people go on vacation. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. That Everybody wasn't the question. That's not the you, know, you know why they did that, though, right? What? Because the first Roman emperor, yeah. Augustus. Watch this. Hold on. Watch this. He, he started right that. Itching. What does that mean? You got to make money out. <laughs> Every time I go like this, he goes, what, lot do, you, of what money. do you do? What do you do? I Played a lot of. Played a lot of. That's the You got to go to casino. When your ears ringing. Yes. What does that mean? When the year rings, it means there's somebody talking about you. Good or bad, though? Depends what year. Can be. Oh, does it? Depends know, what year. Depends. Yeah. He goes, what are you? If you say, left, oh, piece of shit, the people. <laughs> you know that kind of person is talking about you bad. And then it says, oh, that guy's talking about me. And it, and the noise just stops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right away. It stops right away. Oh, if you pick the person? So if you pick the right person, it stops right away. Okay. All right, I have a I have a wow. funny a funny You're question for you. All the time Since we're talking you? about money, I'm talking about you. I'm thinking about you all the time. Is that it with the trivia? So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll skip the other one. <laughs> what uh, 
We're, it's New Year's Day right now. This episode's coming out on New Year's Eve. All right? Okay. So everybody watching this is probably home right now, getting ready for the ball drop, whatever the situation is. I hope there's a pot of lentils cooking for everybody at home. Do you believe in lentils on New Year's Day? You ever heard of that? Lendik, yeah. Lendik. Lendik. Yes. It brings the money, they right? They do with the, with the special sausage in Italy. They call it Cotechino. 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 Yeah, yeah. That, I, know what, uh, make, I know what, how to make it. Those what color underwear soft. should you have on? <laughs> Any kind. <laughs> Not Blue? red? It's red, right? You got a red, 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 red. And red I know you got red underwear. Christmas. Tell him, yeah, tell him what underwear you wear. I'm trying to get him to wear boxer briefs. He won't do it. No? Won't you wear the tidy whities though? No, yes. not tidy whities No, you don't wear Fruit of Loom. You wear the European. Oh, the thongs. Yes. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. They look like that's a slippy. They call it slip in Italy. What? Sleep. Slippini. Oh, I call them Speedos. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah. I heard That's what I, I wear. Yeah, yeah. You know why I wear that? Now I got to tell you the truth. Okay, go ahead. The reason why, all the time <laughs> I used to use... Those uh, American underwear that I get a fruit, what do you call it? Fruit, 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 yeah, fruit, right? fruit, fruit, whatever they call it, yeah. right? And uh, <laughs> I used to go in my drawers because my dear son here used to use my underwear. Wow. Okay. And yeah, all the time I go in the drawers, I cannot find no underwear. I says, all right, now I got to change the style underwear. Like they cannot use it. Dude, I opened the drawer. There was nothing but Speedos. That's like, what am I wearing now? <laughs> All low cuts. They okay. were this big. And I low stopped cut. the hammer using my underwear. Low cut Speedo, dude. That's it. Listen, well, then I must take after mommy because I had too much to put into a Speedo. Yeah, it, it would hang out. Too much. I can't it would hang out. those boxes of bullshit. Yeah. I wanted something that's tight. My box of briefs are. You want to keep, right here. keep it yeah, all in one place. First, first of all, I, gotta, I have to wear that because I have to put it tight. Because the the operation I had, he had his prostate removed. Okay, yeah. and I gotta use. You know, I'm gonna I'm not afraid to say that. Right, right, right. How would you be afraid to, to say? It? I have to use my diapers. If I don't <coughs> put the diapers are nice and tight, like I will pee myself. I don't want to. Right, but you right. had speedos before you got your prostate removed. Yes, I, I like that all the time. That's you, what we be wear honest. In Italy. Be honest. In Italy, everybody wears that. Do you like how you look in the mirror what, with speedos? What about I when don't you care? What about when you go to the beach? Do you wear the speedos too? Or? I used to wear the the, the speedo bathing suit. Yeah, I until bend, I got old enough, where Even I had in friends Italy, at the that's beach, what they wear. and I said, "You need shorts." <laughs> I still got one of those. You need if shorts. My son wanted me to wear all the time. Okay, I said, when "My friends are here. You need to put on shorts." I'm gonna put it on. <laughs> I say, "Unless you're on a swim team, you need to put shorts on." No. <laughs> so now he's got like American flag shorts. I got the American flag shorts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he looks I like the Italian the, version of Apollo Creed. I got that Creed. one you talking about. What? The the the, the Italian bunny suit. I know that. I've seen you win him. Next time, okay. Next yeah. time, I gotta bring it. You used to use the sunbathe on your back with your feet up and your knees up, and we saw everything. Okay, <laughs> everything. Uh, beautiful memories, huh? I said, put uh, that away, dude. Yeah. You need to wear shorts. Yeah. And on this topic, there has to be one childhood memory you have with your father that was just pure embarrassing. Do you have any um, off the top of your head? Yeah, I got my ass kicked in front of my cousin Joey. Um, my father would always come home from work and always a hardworking guy, man. He, both of my parents. What'd you do for work? <coughs> carpenter. Okay. So at one point, always he was doing carpentry work, leaving the house at 5 30, 6 o'clock. And then at three o'clock, 3 30, he would go and do landscaping. He had a couple, you know, side accounts and he would do landscaping. He I would come home. Ten, ten of them. He That's would, nice. he would, uh, <clears throat> he would take a shower, put on his underwear, put on a t-shirt and lay on the living room floor and watch TV. So at one point, he was watching a horror movie. So I said to my cousin Joey, I said, dude, we're going to scare the hell out of my dad. I tied as many shoelaces as I had together. I ran them down the steps, around the couch, and I tied it to a chair in the kitchen. Right? We had a huge open yeah. floor plan. So he's laying down watching like Michael Myers or Friday the 13th. The lights are closed. My mom's not home. My sister's not home. My brother's not home. And I'm sitting on the top of the steps with my cousin. And you can and see... born like that. You can... You could see the my father from the mirror. We had that that picture, uh, the frame on the on the wall, huge frame with a mirror. But then it had a town in Italy carved in like metal. Mm -hmm. Everyone has one of those pictures, yeah. right? Put right there. So I'm watching my father. I yanked the chair a little. He goes, Anthony, get out of the kitchen and stop making fun of your father. Anthony, okay, watch. I'll fix you, ass. Sits down again. Watches TV. I yank it a little harder. Eh, okay, now I gotta get up. Now you make me get up. You're gonna pay. Gets up, turns on the light in the kitchen, looks under the table, looks everywhere. He goes, 
fuck is she going on? It's, it's a fucking chain move. Doesn't see the shoelace. Puts the chair back. Dude, I yank this chair. It tumbles through the living room. He jumps up and goes, what the fuck? What, what do you want from me? Who are you? What do you want from me? What the spirit to you? I start laughing my ass off. He's trying to talk to the dead. He starts laughing because he hears me laughing. Comes to the bottom of the steps, got this remote control in his hand. I'm laughing with my cousin Joey. I'm like, oh my God, dad, I scared the hell out of you. He goes, oh yeah, you don't think I knew it was you? I said, you were talking to the dead. He goes, ha ha ha. Hits me square in the head with the remote. The remote splits wide open. I'm laid on the steps. My cousin's dying. He goes, nah, you're going to get up, fix the remote controller. You broke. I said, I broke. You hit me in the head. Because of you instigated your father. Okay? Try to give me a heart attack. Goes back down. I'm bleeding from my forehead. My cousin Joey's like, I told you not to do it, dude. I told you not to do it. And from that point on, he'll never admit. Will you admit now you were scared? No. You weren't scared? I don't think so. You didn't think it was a ghost? I know you would, you would do things like that. Okay. <clears throat> Can't admit it. Can't admit it. That well, was, that maybe, maybe I was scared a little bit. The, maybe. The, that wasn't just to watch a movie on TV. Oh, was we, that? Uh, that the Friday the 13th would have come out of the screen? <laughs> <laughs> We're very excited to announce a long-term partnership with the Soto Gastronomia out from Australia. This guy's got a really, really interesting restaurant. The Soto has a very interesting story. So they're first generation Italian Australians. They're basically us in Australia. The Soto was created in their parents' and grandparents' honor so that they can pay their legacy forward. 100% of their proceeds goes to people in need, charities, and the arts. DeSoto will be supporting us this year, so you know the content's going to be even better. Bro, and who knows? Maybe at some point we're going to have to take a trip down on that. Huh? I was always curious how the Italian Australians made food. It's time we find out. Calandra's Bakery, family-owned since 1962. Luciana Calandra, Sicilian immigrant, started the bakery in 1962 in Newark, New Jersey. Passing it on to his grandkids. The third generation, bacon bread the old school way. Located in your nearest supermarket in New Jersey and New York. And don't forget to visit any of their three locations in New Jersey. And what, was, what, about, what about a memory in like school where you just knew you were different from the other kids? From, um, your, from, your, from your parents. Aw, oh, dude, I mean, lunch. I, I would have Nutella sandwiches. I'd have... Uh, I'd have Italian bread with uh, egg frittata with mm -hmm. onions and peppers and, you know, and they're like, where'd you get that egg sandwich? I'm like, my parents made it. How did they make that? I'm like, what? Uh, how the hell? You know, I didn't have peanut butter and jelly. Um, I, I would take like bricks of, of uh, Parmigiano cheese or a Giano cheese where best. I'd sit there and just break so it good. and eat it with bread. And they're like, ew, what the hell is that smell? <laughs> I said, I don't know. Why? What does it smell like? They're like, oh. <laughs> it smells like feet. I'm like, who's got a fucking athlete's foot? I'm sitting there eating the cheese. They're like, oh, it's your cheese. I'm like, my cheese don't smell like feet. This is the best cheese in the world. So I'd be eating that. I remember one day, dude, my lunch came through my paper bag. I had a paper bag of lunch. It came right through the bottom. They gave me a pork chop. And the grease, <laughs> the, the, the oil from the pork chop leaked right through the bag. <laughs> and the best, I, my mom got permission from the teachers to allow me to warm up my lunch in the teacher's Wow. Wow. That's, that's like if legendary. I took pasta, wow. they're like, she's like, here, because my mom has no accent anymore. She, when did mommy come here? When she was 13? She was 11 years old. 11. So she went to school here. Is that her yeah. accent? Like my it, mom. Like no I accent. Was yeah. She went to school here. Yeah. I don't do it. So I don't went to school. No one's, no one's accusing you of anything. So <laughs> she would call the school and say, hey, listen, sometimes I will give my son food that just doesn't taste good cold. And I would bring, you know, pasta forno. I'd bring pasta fajol. Whatever you got left And I'd have to warm left it up. Left. And the teacher's like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's pasta fajol. My father made it. Oh, my God. Can I have some? And I, so then my mom would give me extra now for the teacher. So I'm like, yeah, here's oh, some no for you. Oh, no wonder they made you so, eat it up. Oh, my God. Yeah, they would, yeah. they would charge me a vig. Oh, <laughs> I'd have to give them pasta. <laughs> pasta beans is that's delicious when you, when you, you know, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. when you fry. Especially in school, you fart the rest of the class. Nah, yeah, yeah but in their school, they would warm it up in the microwave. Yeah. If you warm he it up on home in believe, the fry pan, doesn't believe the microwave. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah. yeah, he goes, uh, you, you uh, how are you going to warm it up? I said, a microwave over my dead body. Get you, a pan. You, you don't have a microwave? I have a microwave. Barely it's used brand it. new. 
Yeah. I never use it. Never. So what? Like, because give I'm us, not gonna get a give radiation. Give us a step by on. step how to like warm up pasta, leftover pasta. That's what I said. Put it in a fry pan. A little olive oil. No, just just to with the you head it up a little bit more sauce because it's, you put it in the refrigerator, it's dry it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. One thing about him, dude, he's a phenomenal and, cook. Uh, Unbelievable cook. Yeah, what are you good at cooking? What like what Everything. are your best dishes? Everything. Dude. Everything. Yeah, uh, dude, um, the only time he messed up. Sometimes I get so tired and I said, I don't, I don't know what to cook in So the only time he messed up, it was me, my brother, and my sister went to his house and uh, upstate. And he makes this dish where he puts freshly sliced potatoes, Parmigiano cheese, uh, tomatoes. Cho- tomatoes, chopped onions. prosciutto, onions. Oh, and, and then he puts. Extreme beans. And then he put. The- can yeah. That's not what I'm talking. I'm not talking about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he puts potatoes. He puts chopped prosciutto, mozzarella cheese, uh, parmigiano, and then he puts another layer of potatoes, and then he just keeps building it. Puts paprika, and he puts it in the oven, and it all like melts together. It's delicious. It's like a potato dish. So I'm eating it one day with my sister, and she goes, Does "Daddy's potato oh, yes, dish tastes know, different." I'm like, "Yeah." I goes, "What's your matter?" I said, thing. "No, okay, stop." Sorry, sorry. He, he'll just jump into the, into the punchline. So I, I go, yeah. So my brother goes, bro, why does it taste like apple pie? I'm like, what? He goes, tastes like apple pie. So my father comes over and goes, tomato. I said, the potatoes don't taste the same. What do you mean the potato don't taste the same? I've been making these for 20 years. It doesn't t- taste it. He goes, oh, shit. I said, what's the matter? I can't read the good, Anthony. Instead of the paprika, I put a cinnamon. <laughs> he put cinnamon it's in the, the entire coast. thing. Yeah. He goes, it's he goes, we still coast. eat it. It's still good. It just tastes like uh, like a pumpkin pie. I pick it up the can, right? And and I just throw them in there. Yeah. I should have looked at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and it was sweet. He goes, and, and, look, he goes, and then he blames the seasoning what company. The he goes, my why they making paprika look like a cinnamon? Man? Cinnamon. I go, what? Cinnamon. 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 I go, I don't know, Dad. It's it's the seasoning. Did it tastes good. Oh, no. Those potatoes. We had to eat good, it. Man. Can't waste that whole dish. Prosci- <laughs> prosciutto, mozzarella, and then you put it like a breadcrumbs on top. Yeah. a little bit. So good. Is that Abelino's yeah. specialty? What is it? No, and then you put it. Uh, you make bake. It then you bake it in, in the oven, and you let it stay maybe an hour to the mozzarella melt. Do you ever order like Grubhub, Uber Eats, or anything? <laughs> yeah, okay. No? You don't even know how to turn on a cell phone. He no? just started learning how to keep it on. He goes, oh, my cell phone, it's never ring. I said, it's off. He goes, what do you mean it's off? But when you call, it's it should turn on. I said, no, you have to turn it on in order for the call to go through. <laughs> so then the other day I realized that he thinks it's like a house phone. I'm on the phone with him. I go, dad, hold on. Let me call you back. My agent's calling me. I get on the phone with my agent. We're on the phone for an hour and 20 minutes while I'm driving to a gig. I He's get waiting off. the whole time? I look. I'm like, why is he still on the phone? So I click over. I go, Dad. Yeah. I said, what are you doing? I'm over here play solitaire on the high pay. I said, why do you have the phone on? He goes, I don't know. I hang up a long time ago. I said, how did you hang up? I put the phone on the table. You got to hit off. He goes, why don't you hit off? I said, because I clicked over. Click over to what? I said, I had another call. Oh, because he, he, he just put the phone down. He just puts it down. And he thinks if he puts it down, it's done. Push, I don't push yeah. So I said, I had another call. He goes, oh, my, I got a call waiting too on my phone. Yes, you have a call waiting. Hit off. That's the red circle. Yes. Okay, I know now. An hour and 20 minutes he was on the phone, but the phone was on the side. Can you imagine you were talking... Rap about somebody. Oh, you I've caught to him. Hang up? Yeah, I've caught him that's, before. That's, that's best. What about the ring? The ring camera story that uh, last time you were on about your Zia with the ring camera. That story went pretty crazy. Oh my god! Is that god. his sister? No, on the other no. Side? His whole family's in Italy. No, my my mom's side is huge. Um, how many brothers and sisters does uh, Grandpa have? Nine. They all together. No, there were sixteen of them. Then why did you just say nine all together? No, no, they were all 16 together. Right. right. And then they have nine survive. The other one, they die. And oh. They one. Yes. You've got Nonno. Yeah. You've got Sabapo. Yeah. You've got Uncle John. you got three sisters and six brothers. Are you sure? Yes, they nine of them. Wait, Grandpa Sabapo, Sibonito. Sifilippo. Sifilippo. Uncle, Uncle John. Uncle John. Uncle Red. Adolfo. Adolfo. Okay. Salidj. Three Seven women years. and six brothers, I'd say. So there was 16 total, though. There was 16 total, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so my grandfather on my mother's side some. has a huge family. So a lot of my aunts and uncles, well, all of my aunts and uncles here, he's got some relatives in, in Connecticut. My family is the same thing. My, my father's family, 
nine and my and my uh, mother's family seven. So I never and knew that. Them, they're not watching TV. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not TV. They had to do it something else for entertainment. That's right? not how the saying goes. <laughs> when you have a big family, they go, "Oh, did you not have TV? They don't watch your TV. <laughs> they don't watch <laughs> TV. They keep the eyes closed. They have sex all the time. It just." <laughs> <laughs> I have a fun man. I like, I like to be here. Man. So, so <laughs> I, true. I didn't know, I didn't know that my grandfather, my nonna on his side, his father had so many siblings. So. It makes sense because he didn't talk to a lot of them. So now I see people at my shows. The last name Rodia, R-O-D-I-A, is I think all of them are originally from the same town, town yeah. as my family. So Dif I, different towns. So they show me pictures of their relatives, and it looks exactly like my They'll grandfather. Exactly. It's got to be my grandfather's brother that he lost. Yeah, you got to be distant with. relatives. It has to be. Uh, no, uh, not even distant. And did you ever do one, it in one, history? One guy I found his his father was my grandfather's brother. I ended up doing research on it. He's oh, my wow. first. And cousin. did you ever yeah. do ancestry? No, I want to do You're that. Probably, you probably like. There's so many relatives. Me and Rock both did it, and it, it automatically pops up like first cousins. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. I don't know if I want to know at this stage because yeah. I get them to come out of the woodworks. Like yeah. one guy goes, wow. "Hey, I think me and you, we got to be cousins." No, yeah, so anyway, it's a tough retirement right now. <laughs> You know, I lose my job a couple weeks ago. I'm going to retire, but I was just do for extra money. Man, you got a lot of people to show. How much are you charge you for taking? I'm like, don't do the calculation. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's coming to you. Um, but is, it's there, is there a nice way to ask for free tickets with you or no? Dude, I give a lot of free tickets away. But like, what's, what's the way to ask? Just ask. Wants to ask. Just ask. Like, I had a woman, um, she wrote me, and she said, uh, I would love to see you live. I've never seen you live. Um, I'm on a fixed income. With everything now, it's so high. I would, I would love to see your show. Hopefully, one day I'll be able to afford it. To try to think, and you know, because sometimes, listen, I'm fortunate. I'm blessed. I, I pinch myself every single morning. I'm not a highly religious person. Every morning I wake up, I look up and say, "Thank you." You got to thank somebody. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing very well. So when you think of the people that support me and come to my shows. You know, that's why like, I tell I tell Michelle all the time, I tell my kids, like my daughter will ask me, <coughs> Daddy, do you ever get mad that people approach you when we're eating or when we're out? I said, no, these people pay our bills. And a lot of people in the entertainment business forget that. Like, your my bills are paid by these people. Mm -hmm. Without them coming to my shows, I don't have a job, yeah. I don't have income. That's true. So, you know, to sit there and, and realize how many people are struggling. So I, I messaged, I was like, hey, listen, whatever show you want to come to, I'll give you two tickets. You know, you and your son can come. There was a guy in Chicago, he's disabled. Um, he was like, you know, he goes, me and my partner would love to come see you. I sent him a car service, had him come to the, to the theater. I'll give tickets away all the time. I'm going to definitely step in a hole right now because I'm going to get messages. <laughs> hey, I'd love tickets. Yeah, yeah, well, I just saw your house on Instagram. You don't need free tickets. <laughs> but uh, some people are, 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 you know, assholes. Some people are funny. I had a lady. <laughs> I, I hope she doesn't watch this. She comes to my house. I'm getting ready. And the doorbell rings. And I, little Italian woman. And I said, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? I'm your neighbor. I live about 15 houses down. That's not my neighbor. You live on the same street. He goes, he, she goes, yeah, I love your video. I'm like, God, the way you see Lucia. She's home. <laughs> I said, she's not real. No, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I want to come and see you Westbury, but the tickets are so expensive. Oh, my God. I said, <laughs> they're not expensive. I keep my tickets pretty affordable. Yeah, but I want to sit up close. I don't got a good eyesight. I got a cataract. I see. Yeah, so does my wife. She has to escalate. <laughs> so she goes, eh, nah, come on, not tease me. I got something wrong with my eyes. It's a fog all the time. I said, D did you come to my house for tickets? She goes, my, if you're going to give, I know, you know, I may be very nice. I live on the same street with neighbor. <laughs> Plus, you Sicilian. No, I'm not really done. Oh, that's okay. I said, I didn't say it was anything wrong. <laughs> so she, I said, listen, I'll give you, how many, how many you want? I said, four tickets are enough. She goes, I mean, if you could do six, I got a big family. I said, son of a bitch, aren't you demanding? <laughs> she goes, I go, I'll, I'll give me your full name. So I write down her full name. And I said, just go to Will Call. They'll be waiting for you. She goes, oh, and they're going to be close, right? I want a front row. <laughs> I want to tell my family I got a front row. I said, yeah, they'll be close. I called my manager, Dom. I go, dude, I'm going to send you a name. Put her in the last row at Westbury in the back. He goes, why? I said, just do it. <laughs> so at the end of the show, she comes and uh, she comes to the meet and greet. And I go, hey, did you like the show? Yeah, but they put me in the back. I said, oh, they didn't understand. I said, front row. They must have meant first row in the back. Son of a bitch. I don't see nothing, but I hear you. You're very funny. <laughs> I said, yeah, well, next time, don't hey, come to my house. Give us a little rundown of, of your next shows and we'll put like a description and uh, the bio um, where, to, where to get tickets. And so all the special we filmed September 30th, 
Um, that's come. We're shopping it now. Hopefully, knock on wood, it gets on like a big streaming service. So right now, we're only booked till about April, May, because we want to wait to see how that does, mm -hmm. and then hopefully shows will get bigger. But uh, I'm booked every weekend, man. Just go to RodeaComedy.com. Um, you know, I'm, I'm finishing off the year in North Carolina, and then New Year's weekend is in Naples. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be at the Paramount again. I'm going to be at the Westbury this year. Um, I just there now they're. You know, before it was a lot of comedy clubs. Now they're starting to be theaters, mm -hmm. you know, weekend of theaters where it's nice because I don't have to do seven shows, but I still mix in the comedy clubs, number one, because some people can't afford to go to a theater. They yeah. like the pricing of a comedy club and it's more intimate. But um, yeah, man, the shows are, are getting crazy and I'm just, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm busy every single week. And I said, as long as I remain married and my father lives for another 20 years, I got endless amount of material. I'll leave it more than that. I'm not doubt. I'm not, I don't. I don't want you to die. <laughs> Watch. I'm gonna live it 21 years. I told you. <laughs> Listen. It, let, let your dad give a pitch to all the fans out there. Maybe they didn't never seen your son live. Why should they go see your son? Look into the camera and tell everybody if they come see my show. If they never saw me before, why what, they should? What can they expect? Well, how's the show gonna be? It's gotta be good show. Make it people laughing until your stomach hurts. That's it. That's it. I mean, I would definitely come see me if you said that. I would love my stomach to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tell them. What do you when, when you tell people how what kind what kind of jokes is he gonna say? Like if I say to you, if I if you don't know me and I say, Hey Tony, I want to come see your son. How's his show? And you just the came. Show, from, what do you say? The show me talking about me most. That's not true. <laughs> I've, I've condensed it down me. to ten minutes of you talking about your wife. All right. Talking about your kids. But what do you say to me all the time? It's like what? It's like I give people what at my show. You said these people laugh. It's like you give it the drop. You give it. You give it. It look like when you open your mouth, the people get get on, get drugs. They laughing so much as soon as you open the laughing mouth. gas, like laughing gas. Mm -hmm. He tries to say like they're addicted, but he goes, yeah. the, the people they laugh. It's like they all I on drugs. I can't believe I said, it. All what? the time I go see a show, he goes, yeah, it's like they all I mean, on drugs. We, we, we and should I'm talk about that. As soon as you open his mouth, the people. I know what he's trying to say. It's, it's, like, it's yeah. like they're almost drugs Upside down to man. laugh. Yeah. But the way he says it, the people they laugh are like they all got to be on drug. I'm like, so they have no, to no, be on they drugs to like, laugh. They look like my son is he, 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 he throwing the joke and and throw the people drugs and they start laughing. They love explain, it. That's explain, what I'm thinking. So explain if you're a drug feeling. addict and you want drugs, come to my uh, show. Man. I give them out. To everybody <laughs> explain, the explain that feeling as a father to see your son. Be in front of thousands he knows, of people. He knows, he knows how to do it, how to make it people laugh. He doesn't understand the question. He said, wow. as my father. Did you when, ever expect when, Anthony to do this? Like, it must be feel really special to you that your son's doing uh, things like this. It's special to me because he asked me the first time he started. He said, Dad, if I talking about you, <laughs> you would be mad? I said, no. I said, if I, you making money, and I hope someday you make a lot of money, it don't bother me at all. A lot of people are asking me that. I say, well, why, you don't get offended? Why I got to get offended? Okay. I know my son in love. That's me. not what he means. What he he mean? means, when I started, the, what like what feeling did you have when you come to my shows and you see like 2,000 people oh, all laughing? He cries. I can't, he cries. I can't open my mouth. I was very happy. You know, very happy for him. He's not, like, so he's not an emotional person for the, for the most part. I, like, at the first couple of shows, I watch it. And more gets more big and big and big, and it sometimes I cry. I, I cry when I watch. So I see tears in his eyes. I'm like, "You okay?" He goes, "Yeah, I just, you know, I see." Especially you. when you hear all those people get up, <sighs> these and people slap, standing slap ovation. Yeah. Yeah, from my son. So I said, "Are you crying?" I mean, not crying. I mean, I'm just it. very no, emotional the motion, when I see the motion, you. That's emotion. Right. So you that's get nice. seasick. Motion. <laughs> you get emotion. <laughs> no, but Anthony, your your come up has been. Amazing, bro. Dude, I, like, I watched the first I'm excited to see a special, bro. Yeah, that, that's a huge special. congratulations to you, bro. That's Thank no you, joke. The special that's came out. It's getting bigger. Um, it's big so I didn't wait. I didn't want to wait for someone to offer me a special. I wanted to put, you know, I, I've been betting on myself since day one. So I ended up putting the money up. I produced it myself. Um, I got with uh, Angry Buddha Productions. This guy, Frank, which was amazing. And we went all out. We did it at the Paramount Theater, 1,100 people. Um, sold out show. We had seven cameras. I, I did it to where when you watch it, it doesn't look like it was filmed with like an iPhone. I put, you know, everything up and I, I, I've never cut corners since day one. I feel like if you're going to bet on yourself, bet on yourself at the house. Put the house on it. Yeah. If you lose, you lose. But if you win, I mean, it can, you know, and now we're shopping it with people and 
you know, my agent and everybody, they're like, well, how much do you want for your special? I said, I don't, I'm not doing it for the money. It's more for the network. 100%. Like the right if this gets on like a Netflix or a Hulu or an Amazon Prime and this goes super viral, where I could put 15 million eyes on it. Yeah. The money will come, man. I, I make good money now where I get to take care of my family. Like everyone always asks me, oh, are you rich? I'm like, rich is a, is a state of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, wealthy is a different story, but rich, I think everyone has a different level of what rich is because as long as I can take care of my family, you know, and not only my, my wife and my kids, take care of my dad, my mom. I mean, they broke their ass my entire life to make sure we were okay. They would sacrifice. He would get a 10-year-old truck so I can have a new car. So now it's my turn. So now, yeah, yeah. you know, if, as long as I can't go to sleep at night knowing I'm financially good, but my dad and my mom and my sister and my brother are struggling. So to rich to me is being able to take care of my family, my brothers, my sisters, my mom, my dad, take care of the people around me and have enough to where I can enjoy the finer things in life, I can enjoy vacations, and that's it. So that's a certain number. Anything after that, now you're talking about wealthy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I told them the money will come if 15, 20 million people watch this and my ticket sales grow. Yeah. I'm looking long term. I'm not doing it. You know, a lot of people, they want a special for a quick check. I'm doing it so later on down the road, I'm like, okay, instead of doing, you know, two shows at the Paramount, I'm yeah. doing a whole week of shows yeah. at the Paramount, and that comes from the special. So uh, the special, I, I called it Totally Relatable because, um, dude. That was the name of your tour, right, too? Yeah, I just, mm -hmm. I kept the same name because yeah. everyone was saying that after my shows. Dude, you told, you're so relatable. You're totally relatable. Yeah. You're talking about my life. And it's nice to see. Number one, it's nice to see that, you know, there are so many Italians out there that were raised like us. Discipline, morals, mm -hmm. respect. You know, my father would bite his hand. We'd all stop. Like, all right, I'm not getting my ass sure, you know, You know what he's talking about? How does it go? You know, I, did, I, did I you tell you, I'm a, like I say, I'm a very happy what he does it up to now. You, you, to me right now, you're like a, an athlete because athletes get asked a question. He's media trained. 100%. They're <laughs> like, so tell me, what was going through your mind when those bases loaded, no outs, and you threw that pitch? You know, I just did baseball been better good to me. And um, <laughs> I just I threw the I'm ball a, and uh, I love my fan. I love uh, Major League and Baseball. Now, and uh, and uh, I love God. Then baseball been better good to me. Okay, and so you're not going to answer the question. And my son would have reached so far. <laughs> no, he's you saying know, when you well, got mad at me, how would you bite your hand? Yeah. Remember when you used to get mad at us when yeah, we were kids? Yeah, like this. And then he would get mad at me. He'd look what you did to you, father. <laughs> not, not only is it nice seeing Italians that were brought up like us, but something I never realized is how many other nationalities. Because you grow up thinking it's just you and your family and your culture. Dude, Argentinians, Russian, Polish, Portuguese, white, black, Asian. I have so many different people now to come see me live. It doesn't have to be Italian. Well, you say it's... And, Sons of immigrants, like people that it's it's ethnic, yeah, children of ethnic uh, upbringing, and even first generation with that old school mentality. But not only all different cultures and all different nationalities, I'm starting to get families. Like last show, I had a family that came. They had two kids in their twenties, the parents in their forties and fifties, and the grandparents all at the same exact show. And to sit there and, and know that I can write comedy that's going to appeal to three generations it's amazing. is absolutely insane. And then the videos, we're working on putting them and, and uh, turning them into a full-fledged cartoon. So then the videos, we have five-year-olds that watch and 80-year-olds that watch. So think about that. that you have an 80-year gap <clears throat> in between audience members where I'm appealing to a five-year-old, but I'm also appealing, and it's crazy. But um, I always say it. Uh, there are so many similarities out there. Like Portuguese people, I got my Portuguese fans that come, and I always say they're the only people that eat more bacala than Italians. Portuguese? Oh, my God. Oh. One guy smelled like bacala. I go, what did you eat today? Do you eat bacala? He goes, fried, fried bacala. Yeah. I said, you smell like it, dude. You smell like a fish market. But it's nice, man. It's, I, I watched the first podcast we did. You were in my garage. Yeah, we yeah. hung up an Italian Bro, I just brought a camera you. by myself. Yeah, I remember, I, I remember that. Yeah, and, I and, you, that. and you had two microphones, three microphones that we had Who, to actually what? hold down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, yo, was I don't know kid? if... Oh. That kid that you guys did the podcast, the one. Who was it? <laughs> just, I love how you interrupt. I really no, 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 it's okay. No, I'm which, which one? Which one? Oh, oh Luca, Luca. 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 Who's, that? Who's Luca? Luca. Luca. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Luca two kid. times. Yeah, God, he, dude, he shot up. Yeah, yeah. He's how tall, tall is he now? He's tall. He's like 6'2". Six 6'2", two. Six two, six two. What? Yeah. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, he ain't. He's tall. He ain't well. I, didn't, I skipped my vegetables, you know? He, so did I, dude. You and me both. We went for the panadon, and the panadon stumps your growth. You know, I look back at that video, too, and it was It's so heavy that we can't grow. It holds us down. That video in his garage... Yeah, there's that camera right there. Literally, I just brought the stand, the yeah. camera, 
I did not know what the hell I was doing. And he said, he goes, yo, I don't know if the batteries and the mics are going to last. <laughs> I'm like, all right, no problem, bro. And it was us sitting at a table. And then when you left, I said to Dom, I said, uh, Dom, you know, my partner slash manager. Yeah. I said, dude, we were just on a podcast. He goes, yeah, in your garage. I'm like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> and uh, dude, and same thing with you guys, man. From where you were then to where you guys are now. I mean, you guys are over a million followers on Instagram. It's yeah. just, it's nice to see. And, and I always say this, a lot of people never wish success on someone else because they have the mentality that if you're successful, I can't be successful. That's yeah, weird. There's enough success to go around. Right? There's, a, there's enough room for everybody. So I love when I see other people come up the same time I did and where you guys are and where we and where I am. You know, there's too many haters out there, dude. Don't ever hate on somebody because they're where you want to be. Use that as a, like I saw Sebastian. I remember sitting at, at Mohegan Sun watching Sebastian do a show of 3,000, 4,000 people. And I remember saying to my boy that we that I went with, I said, this is going to be me someday. I didn't hate on him. You know, I wanted to be where he was. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you get ignorant people. You're never going to be a Sebastian. I don't want to be Sebastian. Mm -hmm. I want to be me, but mm -hmm. I want to be at Sebastian's level. Yeah. And I've never downside, you know, downplayed anybody or wished for somebody to fall off the totem pole so I can get on it. it it's like at the same time, you can get successful with other people and be happy for everybody else. And it, it's, there's not enough of that, especially with Italians, man. Yeah, man, especially with So Italian. much competition. I got a big family. You have so many brothers and sisters that don't talk to each other over the dumbest shit. And then what happens... Every the time, they don't even remember why. They don't. And then, and then, but they know there's a grudge. And then what happens is, you see them at a funeral. And the person they haven't spoken to in 20 years is laying in a box. And now they're regretting <clears throat> why they didn't speak. You know, and then they give you... Oh my God, I don't know why we're not talking. It was just so stupid. I've been telling you that for 20 years. You know, so with the Italians, there's so much competition. Much of an ego, man. It is, man. It's, it's, it's ego, it's, it's pride, sad. it's animosity. Just listen, life is too short. Laugh and love as much as you possibly yeah. can. I mean, I don't want to sound like a motivational speaker, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, if shit's so not true, worth though, holding a true. Laugh and love as I, much I as you can. I do want to ask man. your dad one thing. You, you watch the show a lot. Yes. You want to give anybody a shout out that's been on the show, like people you like? Who are some of your favorite people that we have that we had on the it show? Was the, well, what's the name of the Sicilian guy that one you did the podcast to? The tall, tall guy. What's the name? Joe Gambino. No, it's a Sicilian guy. This guy. Tall. It's not Joe. Not Joe. I know. I know Joe. That your son was. I know podcast? Joe. He come and see. I meet the Joe. Come my see, son's a show. Joe's a nicer guy. The movie star. The one who come and see you. The, the box. Oh, Chaz. Thing. Chaz Palmentary. Yes. Yeah. Chaz. Yeah. You, you did, did a podcast show. with Chad? Yeah, you did yeah he was on Chad's pod. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's a nice guy. That, that guy. You've never met him. Huh? No, but he, I'm asking him. him who he liked on I the know. show. I like met the him. Show. I saw when, <laughs> when, he come, when he come and see you the Hold boxing. On. Crazy Vinny, you no. said. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> so I, I was doing I a podcast. I see Vinny on a, on a podcast the way you guys do it. I was, I was doing That's a podcast. I had Sal Valentinetti on my podcast when I first started. And we called my dad. And I go, Dad. He goes, yeah. I said, I have I have somebody here that you like. And he goes, who? I said, he's a singer. Who's that? I said, try to guess. The guy from uh, America's Got Talent. He goes, America's Got Talent. I said, Sal, the voice. Yeah, he's okay, but he's oh, in a, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, he's yeah. really talented. You know I said, he's right here. So I Sal's like, great. Too. So then you I notice, said, You notice now when you call people, it's like, yo, I got you on speaker. Uh, uh, dude, you, you have, have to. You, you have try to sing in Italian. You don't know how to do it. What the hell is I got to tell you? So I got to lie to you? Sal sings something in Italian. <laughs> I got to lie to you? And he goes, he goes, yeah, that's okay, but you could tell from his voice he's not really Italian. I said, <laughs> Dad, true. he's... I said, so then I, he remembers who it is. He goes... Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a beautiful voice. I love you, Sal. I love you. <laughs> I I'm love like, you. After you've just totally <laughs> torn him to shreds. I love you. <laughs> I, told him, I told him the truth. Dude. What do you want? Yeah, Sal's a great guy. He's, a, yeah. he's talented. Very no, talented. he's good. Yeah, yeah, he's got a nice voice. I yeah. like it. I like it. He's a nice guy. I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> well, speaking of athletes, you know, we mentioned it before. I have yeah. to mention it. What are your thoughts on the Italian American icon Tommy DeVito? <laughs> Italian American icon the Tommy Dude, DeVito. I'm an NFL <laughs> fan, even <laughs> though. Are you a Giants fan? I'm a Giants fan, even though I've dug into it this year. Uh, if you look to see how many weird things happen in the NFL since FanDuel and DraftKings came became big, sports betting is a billion dollar industry. When you see some of these games, if it doesn't make sense, it's because it, it shouldn't make sense. I looked into it, so a lot of people don't know this. NFL is listed under entertainment, which means it doesn't have to be you know, legitimate or whatever. So I, I've kind of lost a little feelings for NFL in the regards of the Italian-American hero right now, Tommy DeVito. 
He's good, okay? He's got to be good. He's in the NFL. But one thing I love about Italians, you could have, an Ita- you could have a punter. If that dude's last name ends in a vowel, yo, all of a sudden these guys come out of Warwick. My, you see the punter on a New York? My, he's got legs like animal. Oh, my. He kicking the ball to the moon if you let him. I swear to God. Best kick I never saw in my life. And all of a sudden the guy's on a shrine. Tommy DeVito, young dude. He's in the NFL. God bless him. I wish him nothing but the best. He is not an Aaron Rodgers. He is not a Joe Montana. They're like, oh, did you see that throw? He's got the best. Th- That's the tightest spiral I've ever seen in my life. No, it's not. No, it's not. He's good. I don't think he is an amazing athlete where he's blowing my mind. Yesterday, he had no touchdowns, you know? Well, I don't know. This is airing you know, uh, New Year's Eve. He's got one yeah. more game. All right, right, so last Sunday, the past Sunday, he didn't have any touchdowns. I want him to be good. But you got to remember, he's a third-string quarterback for a reason. I wish him the best, but guys, let's stop. Let let him do something. Let him play a whole season I will, and give us a winning I will season. Say, well, and I'm I'll give you respect because uh, me, we've been friends for a while, and um, like we've been following each other for a while, I should say. And I would love to see. Well, I'm happy from all this. That he's definitely going to get a chance going forward. Hundred percent. Whether he he's going to be a starter or a backup Listen, somewhere, he got himself. I don't what he like to do, when you so. actually tell the truth and you give an honest critique of someone. People are so quick to call you a hater. Oh, you're hating. No, I'm just not kissing his ass yet. He's better than Daniel Jones in my opinion. He's more mobile. He's a quick runner. He's definitely great on his feet. His throwing. This all comes with experience. I watched myself three years ago on stage. I cringe. Because my delivery wasn't as smooth. My jokes weren't as funny. Same thing with him. He's got to play. But he deserves a chance to start yeah, yeah, next year. that's what I'm year. saying. Daniel Jones was, I think, what? One and five? Mm-hmm. He's, he's what? Four and one or four well, three, and two? Now three I was telling two. Bino, I think he solidified the backup at the very least. What? Solidified the... I, I, I think people are going to be fighting for him to start next listen, year, to be honest with you. I think he should start... Number one, you, you're going to get more fans in the seats. People, he has a better marketing yes, scheme. Yes. Whether it's the Italian audience or what have you. He deserves a chance to start. And now next year, if he goes, you know, nine and eight, if he has a winning season, dude, he's got my respect now. I'm just not jumping on the Tommy DeVito bandwagon. But you guys should definitely have him on the show. And if yeah, he doesn't want to come right away, it. just tell him that Sabino's the coach. I mean, you look <laughs> like <laughs> Brian Dable over there. You're like, yeah, no we, we have on. Brian on the show. And just have like like a quick shot. Oh, is he there? Let me see. Boom. And just turn the phone away. And be like, oh, he is there. So all you, need is, a, like all you need is a New York Giants starter jacket pullover. Yeah. And you are the head coach headset. of the New York Giants. Right? And Everybody headset. says that to me. I think you sent me a picture yeah, one I time. Did. <laughs> Cause I did. Because I was like, yo, this dude Sabino's blowing up. Bro. He's on the sideline <laughs> at the Giants game walking with a headset. How did he get on the sideline? But uh, yeah, you should definitely have him on a show. Listen, you got to admit though, it's a win for the Italian-American. I was just going to say that. Like that we haven't had a quarterback like that since... Uh, or Dan Marino, yeah, Dan Marino, Testaverde. Yeah, yeah. Dan Marino. We had Ben DiNucci a few years back. He's no, he's no Dan Marino. He's got a lot of work, but he could be. But see, like what you said about a punter, like, yeah, we have Italian punters, Italian linemen. Right. But when it's the starting quarterback, <laughs> yeah. it yeah. hits a little different. Well, yeah. so what's fun... So, and New York, too. In bro. New York. So, hey, listen, I'm just don't fact check me on this, okay? I, gotta, I know you don't like when I expose mean things. So... Italians love supporting Italians. They love supporting their kids. I love seeing his dad in the audience, mm-hmm. in the in the seats. I played soccer for one year when I was a kid. I was horrible, right? And I remember I said they, they, I wouldn't even play back then. There was no participation trophies. You sucked. You sat on the bench, and the only way you got in the game is that the score was either up by ten, down by ten, and your presence wouldn't affect the outcome. So I never got any burn. Right? I never got. I sat on the bench. So I go, Dad, you coming to my game today? I don't think so. I said, Why? You want to know why? Go put on your uniform and come down and meet me in the living room. I'll show you why. So I went to put on my uniform. I sat on the couch. This is how twisted he is. I sit on the couch with my uniform on. He goes, you see what you do right now? I can watch you home. I don't got to come to the game and watch you sit down all the time. <laughs> is that okay? true? All, 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 all the other parents, all the other parents, they cheer for the kid. Nice pass, nice shot. What am I going to say? Oh, you're the best to sit down on the bench I never <laughs> see. Keep it sad. Keep it sad. So to have your parents at the game supporting <laughs> you Christ. is the greatest thing in the world. He wasn't wrong. Then I played baseball and football, and I was really good, and he would come to the games. Oh. But listen. Like you said, for the Italian community, it's great to get behind someone in the NFL. Doesn't happen all the time. Yes, there are Italians, but a starting quarterback. I like when Italians come together. But it definitely starts creeping over to the side of 
enough with the whole goomba. See, we're first generation. That whole, hey, you, we, we, we tend to cringe a little bit because my dad doesn't speak like that. I don't have uncles that speak like that, right? My uncle didn't show up to my house in a leather jacket with a fedora hat and seven gold changing. Oh, what the fuck is in the oven over here? We hate that shit. That's like an SNL skit. We hate that as first generation. But first generation, second, third, fourth, my thing is I don't rate people on how Italian they are. If you're Italian, it's, it's yeah. in your blood. Because there's sometimes that people go, he's not Italian, he can't speak it. I don't speak it fluent, I speak a dialect. You're not telling me I'm not Italian, though. I have the love for the culture. I was raised by immigrants. I'm Italian. So you're not telling me I'm not Italian just because I can't speak it fluently, okay? So I hate when people bash each other because of how Italian you are. Mm. However, I'm not all big on that Goomba stuff. However, it's still Italian. They're proud of being Italian. But, I mean, can we talk about his agent on here? Because, you know, that three-piece pinstripe Sean? suit. Dude, three-piece pinstripe suit with a turtleneck. Never seen that happen before. And uh, the green suit, I mean, that was pretty loud. But again... <laughs> Isn't that from the Italian-American... Uh... He's Hall of Fame or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. He got nominated. But I you know. know someone that went to school with him, and uh -huh. he said that's not an act. That's exactly how he was his whole life. And I respect that, then. I respect... If, if that's it, how he was, correct. then I do respect it too. When I, I heard that, because you think, okay, he's a, he's an agent, he's Italian, he's gonna look like he just came out of you know Goodfellas. Yeah. No, that's him. That's how he dressed when he was in I, college. I like that. He people would go out. He'd be the guy in a sport coat. He'd be the guy in a suit going to a bar. Yeah. So I respect that. That's you. That's your identity. Yeah. Be. But there's too many imposters out there where they put on you know an outfit for social media, and then all of a sudden you see them out, and you're like, well, what, happened, what happened to your accent? Why, why aren't you talking like that? You know, so him, he's like that. He's been like that. I respect him. Be like that. I wouldn't wear the suit, but, you know, it looked good. It was tailored. I heard you he know? liked his pasta al dante, though. Dude! <laughs> pasta al so, dante. yes, I saw a video with him in Chicago, and he goes, oh, the food here is great. You know, it's al dante. I don't know who Dante is. I think that's but the guy he's that's running not the for chef. Senate, isn't it? What? <laughs> al Dante's running for Senate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a guy, There's Al Dante, a, sitting up going, I was al never dente. at that restaurant. He wanted to say Al Dente. Yeah, he said Al Dante. But listen, he's also, you got to also understand. Who's that? The, the agent for Tommy DeVito. You got to understand, oh, oh, Tommy oh. and his agent have been thrown into the spotlight yeah, like that. Overnight. You cannot prepare yourself. I feel like him. I feel like Tommy's handling it really well. Yeah, like, he answers he the questions all yeah, the way no, I, I hear he's a great kid. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I met him. And like I said, we've been following each other on social media. The kid's taking uh, the opportunity that's at hand for him. And like, listen, my my popularity came, and I still have so much work to do. I, I want, I want to be a household name. I want when you say Anthony Rodia, people boom, they know who I am. Right now, nobody, you know, not. I always say nobody knows who I am. I get approached here and there, but not enough people. You downplay it to yourself. Yeah, it, but you shouldn't, bro. You listen, shouldn't. I'm, and one thing about me and people that know, you guys have known me since day one. I don't change. I'm, I don't turn on a switch when I get on stage. I'm like, oh, it's showtime. The comedian has to come Man, You're out. always like that. I'm like that off stage and I'm the same way on stage. It's just you put a mic in front of me and you put people in the seats and I'm telling, I'm talking. Now we got we to gotta test that though. What? Papa Rodia. Has he changed? I don't think he's never, changed. You got, that, you got dad's blessing? You know what changed? He changes the Honda way. <laughs> That's the only thing and I don't changed. wear yours anymore. No, I, I definitely okay. didn't change either. I, no, even, it, even it with me now, right? I can't go anyway. Now they, they see more and more on stage. Dude, he's getting approached by like smoking women. Well, yeah. Now, yeah, like, yeah. now they see me. Before, there was a just, uh, you know, don't They just you. pass you by? Yeah. Huh? The ladies would just pass you by. Yeah. Now they're, they're, <laughs> no, now they know who I am. When I go there, oh, there's a Papa Rodia right there. You know, right away. Did you ever before, pick up a nice lady a, at a... That's just the one you created. What do you What do you call it? The, what? the one you did, it, you look like me. Papa Rodia. Yeah. When, when you when you played the character. I play the him character. on, on, yeah, I play him on my video. Character. Now they, they know I'm they, the they know how, about, how about the women that uh, saw you at the airport? Mm. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> right, huh? Wait, wait, so I, I got to ask. In Italy, man. Oh, my gosh. You would. Oh, I can't have a picture with you? I says, yeah. I says, you do me a favor. You want to have a picture with me? You know who I am? Uh, yes. And then you gotta, what you got to do, you got to send the picture to my son. 
because my son, he got to see what the father's doing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so this, this, girl, this girl, Nikki, sends me the picture and I go, where is she pulling women like this? She's like in her 30s, beautiful Italian girl. So I speak to him. He go, I go, yo, what are you doing? He goes, ew. Forget about what I'm going to do. You see, hey, what are you trying to be? You see the over? woman <laughs> I take a picture with and she love you, father. I'm like, <laughs> Oh then I went, I went I went inside the plane. I found another one right next to me. We do wow. the flight to, fin- a nice to New York City. No, <laughs> to New York all the way to Naples. Let me tell you something. I've been oh flying every weekend. Beautiful there's times, there's woman, times I'm man. on a plane eight times a month. I have yet to sit next to anybody remotely attractive. <laughs> this dude goes to Italy. The girl at the gate, the girl on the plane. He goes, Anthony, I don't know what it was. And I have it too behind me. <laughs> he goes, I don't know what it was, yes. but I think that they know you father was sit over there. I was just surrounded by beautiful I can't beautiful even open woman. my mouth no more. I feel like I was a deer <laughs> in and it was a hunting season. That's a good problem. And everybody yes. want to hunt to you father. I'm like, calm <laughs> Well, down. just for reference. <laughs> calm down. Anthony's father's a single man, everybody. Yes, this yes. My parents were divorced. I said it to my son. My, my like parents, that, my son uh, says, what the hell is it? doing it. My parents got divorced when I was 19. I think my parents are the only off the boat parents to ever get divorced. My mom lost her accent. His got worse. Everything was lost in translation. But yes, my father is a single man. Just wanted to clear that up. Proceed proceed at your own risk. (laughs) Proceed Proceed at your own risk. I need a company, man. You got a wink in the camera. Give him a wink. Give him a wink. I need need a one company. Just for company. That's it. It's got to leave it with me upstate. Give him a new new vase. That sounds like a kidnap. I, I, I kiss everybody. That's my happy man. I gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> so, so look now. Be nice. Listen, maybe we could do a dating show for your dad, bro. Yo, a dating a dating show for your dad would be Imagine hilarious. Imagine seeing your dad do that to the <laughs> That's the happy man I wanna be. I want a nice company ship. Oh, he mixes man. sometimes companionship and company. I want a company ship. You want a company to give you a ship? You don't even work for the company. Nah, I want to be happy, you know. You are happy, I man. You, you look like a happy guy, you know, though, I got to say. I cannot go away from upstate, man. I love upstate. But why is that? What's with everybody who goes upstate? I cannot go down the city and start my life all over again. He, he likes no traffic. He likes the air up there. The air is cleaner. You look up at the sky, the stars are like I take cleaning. it one day at a time. You know? That's it. The best today. So what, I, what I love about him, he just did it. He didn't catch on to it. He just did it. Yeah. He'll talk about something, and then he'll give you sayings that he thinks backs up what he's saying, but the sayings have nothing to do like, with what well, he... He's I like, I, I cannot live anywhere other than up in state. I love it up there, but you got to just take it one day at a time because tomorrow <laughs> it's not guaranteed. Like, if you live in the past, you're not going to forget about the future. And if I take it one day at a time, you give me the finger, I give you the whole arm. Open it's like an inch and don't make you happy no more. I used to be happy with an inch. And everybody yeah. say, nobody knows a tougher guy unless you meet a real tougher guy. That's your bull of shit. So I got to stay up and stay. I said, what? Take it one day at a time, man. Said. It makes sense. It don't make sense. <laughs> to him. <laughs> to him. When I open my eyes in the morning, I said, thank you, God. Helping me and my kids. Speaking of God. Life. Long he has life. a picture on That's his it. wall of Jesus Christ, and there's a little light on top that God. shines That's down it. on I don't Jesus. Care. Was right? everybody making fun of me with a believing God? Who's making fun of you no, believing no. in God? I say, I just say. Nobody's going to make fun of you. It's an expression. I know. Okay. It's okay to believe in God. Right. I, have a, I have a tattoo of a cross on my entire back. It's all right. All right, don't pinch my. You rip my skin out. That's not <laughs> no, even. That's so he's, he's got a picture on his I'm wall. Off. A picture on his wall. It's Jesus Christ. It's a light on top shining down on Jesus Christ. Okay. He calls me one day. He goes, "You? Why I left the light? Can on you it? let me yeah, finish yeah, yeah. a thought? Okay. I want to see if you reach to the point." He goes, <laughs> <laughs> "I want to see if you reach to the point, but just in case you don't reach, I'm going to interrupt you okay. <laughs> at the intersection." <laughs> so he's got a picture. Things, he got a right? p- picture of Jesus Christ on his wall with a light shining down, and it's plugged in. He goes, "You? I think of God to watch you, Father." I said. I'm pretty sure he does. He knows you're there. Anthony, you don't understand. The power went out last night. A bigger rain is storm. A lightning must strike the transit form. And a power to no lights. Okay? You understanding me? No lights? I said, yes, that I know what no electricity is. You believe I walk in the house with no lights and the light was still on, Jesus Christ the face. God was making sure it was okay. I didn't want to tell him. There's if you turn it around, around, there's a battery in the back. It's a battery backup because it's a clock. So it just keeps it. I didn't want to break his heart. 
I said, no, Dad, you're 100% right. He goes, yeah. <laughs> Italians when, always look for that goes, sign. When man. that light to go off, that's when your father's life is finished. I said, <laughs> oh my God. God forbid, <laughs> dude. That gonna battery change. dies. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to lay down on the ground and wait for his day to come. <laughs> Oh, Anthony, the, the, the battery time. died. <laughs> Anthony, I miss you. I love you. Please take care of my grandkids. Dad, what's the matter? The bot, the, the light went off. Dad, change the battery. You'll get another ten years out of it. <laughs> yeah, but you tell them why I left the, the oh. lights on and I never shut it off. The See what I mean? On, yeah, on. I never shut on it off. The light. Mystery H. Listen, on that so pit, it's true. That picture of Jesus Christ I had. It was in our house. I clean it up, I spray paint again, right? And then I left the lights on it to the day something happened. Remember when you shut it through the door? Yeah. That's why it was a miracle. Ten minutes before, it was my uh, daughter and my, uh, my other son behind the door, and I took him to hunt. There's so many people confused right now. Right? You want me to just clear it up real quick? Go ahead. All right. So <laughs> I'll take his word, mashed potatoes, and I'll make it into a, oh, a really it. nice meal. <laughs> Chef so I, I was 13 years old, and this is I'm, this, I'm huge on gun safety. I teach him how to hunt. So I'm a fan of guns, but I'm also a fan of gun safety. So I was 13. We went hunting. I had a 22 rifle in my hand. I took out the clip. I gave it to my father. Forgot there was a bullet in the chamber. I'm walking, and the gun hits my knee, goes off, shoots through the front door of the house, across the kitchen, Hits the china closet, shatters seven plates in the china closet. Five minutes before that, my little brother, he, he must have been four years old, he was peeking out the door to see if I was coming back yet, and my sister was putting dishes in the china closet. Oh, my God. Five minutes before, killed my brother, I would have killed my sister. That was a miracle. Ever since then, That's crazy. I, never shut off the I go hunting, I leave the tree stand, I get down, I go on the quad, I unload the gun, I unload the clip, put everything in my pocket, drive to the house. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's a tough lesson to learn. Oh, oh my God. Right Dude, thing. let me tell you something. As Thank a 13-year-old kid, yeah. I was in tears, man. Yeah. I was. I, I must have cried for a week straight because I couldn't get that thought out of my head. But uh, he said, but he goes back to the picture. If that picture was you know, on the wall, you would have killed your whole family. I'm like, who says that? Yeah. Who said? You see the light who was on in Jesus Christ? He was watching you. I never shut off the light. He lights was watching you. That light to light. save you. I yeah. said, or it was the five minutes that, that you light, know, it took us to walk from the land. That light is 24 hours a day. Listen, I, I always I say this. Shut it off. But I'm, a, I'm not super religious, but I thank God every day. I feel blessed every day. I always say, you have to look up or believe in something. Yes. Why not believe in Jesus Christ? And teach its own. Listen, some people don't. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I, mean, I choose to believe in something, and, and you know that's who I believe in. Because what God says, help yourself, and I help you. Yeah, you can help yeah, yourself. Yeah, I you the God. Are you? Yeah, my dad that's always right. told me that. Yeah, that's right. You gotta it help is. yourself. It is. Yeah, you have Listen, to. If you don't help you yourself and keep him mess it up yourself, right. how's God has got to help? You? Right. Yeah. Well, there, there's there's a there's a joke that I love. Uh, there's a woman. She's on a uh, cruise ship. Are you giving us a joke right yes, now? Yes, it's a cruise ship. There we go. So there's a woman on a cruise ship. And uh, she falls overboard, and she's she just starts drifting out into the ocean, and a guy passes by on a fishing boat, and he goes, "Excuse me, excuse me, you need help?" She goes, "No, I'm okay. God is gonna save me. I pray every day." So he passes by. He goes, "Okay." Another boat comes by. Fifteen minutes later, "Excuse me, you need help?" "No, thank you. God is gonna save me. I pray every day. It's okay. God is gonna save me. Don't worry about it." He passes by. Ten minutes later, a small fishing boat comes by. Guy has a life jacket. He goes, you want me to throw you a life jacket? No, no. Thank you. God is going to save me. I'd be okay. No worry about it. All of a sudden, ten minutes later, she drowns, dies, goes to heaven. Right? God meets her at the gate and goes, what happened? He goes, what do you mean? I pray every day. I was waiting for you to help me. He goes, I sent you three boats. <laughs> <laughs> See? If you don't help yourself, I, I can't help, help you exactly, because you yeah. don't believe in me. And a lot of people always bring up fate. You know, Did, is fate what brought you to do comedy? Is fate this, fate that? I think fate brings you to a crossroad. You know, like if fate had anything to do with what I'm doing, it brought me to a crossroad and I had a decision to make. Do I go left and stay at my job, which I hated? I was making enough money to support my family, but do I stay left and do the comfortable thing? See, a lot of people, they, they don't chase their dreams because of comfort. They, I could have stayed left, kept working, did this on the You're side. You're a car salesman, right? I, I was a finance manager finance in the dealership. Manager. Started as a car salesman and then did finance management. That's the road that you were stuck on. So I could have, I could have said, hey, listen, I don't want to scare my wife. 
I don't want to scare my family. I don't want to worry anybody. I don't want to take the risk. Just what most people do. 100% because of comfort. That's the comfort. That's, 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 that's the safe way. Or do I take fate and go right with it and drop everything that I'm doing and take the biggest risk of my life, which will have the bigger payoff? You know, you always got to look at benefit and, we're, you know, risk versus benefit. If I take this risk, like I remember going home when I quit my job and my wife was in the kitchen. She goes, what are you doing home at 12 o'clock? I said, I quit my job. She starts crying hysterical. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you crying for? She's like, Anthony, I'm pregnant with our second kid. And I think that's a big thing that pushed me also. But I said, what's your fear? I said, I'm with an agency. I have six months worth of shows. I've made more the first three months doing comedy than I did at my job. What's your fear? She goes, what if you fail? And everybody thinks about that. What if I fail? The question they don't ask themselves, which I asked her, I said, what if I don't? And she said, what do you mean? I said, what if I don't fail? What if this keeps getting bigger? What if this keeps going further? What if I keep getting better? We could have an amazing life. What if I don't fail? And I said, I can't live with myself without knowing that. So I'm going to try. If it doesn't keep progressing and getting better, I could always go back to work. I'll get another job. I can't go back to the company I just left because I torched the hell out of that chance because I cursed everybody out because the owners were horrible. I go, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, I'm out. I said, but I'll go back to work. I'll work somewhere else. I can always get a job. But this is my shot at doing the one thing in this world that I love more than my family, and that's making people laugh. And I went right, and I, I'll i never look back on it. And if I didn't do that, dude, I'd be second-guessing myself every day of my life. What got me to do it was people were saying, you missed your calling, you missed your calling. Don't ever miss your calling. If I have anything to say to anybody out there in the same position, jump, take the risk so you don't second-guess yourself, but always keep in the back of your mind. I think this is a problem with a lot of people. Everyone, I hate the saying... No matter what you want to do in life, if you give it 150%, you don't give up, you'll make it. Bullshit. You might not make it. I'll never be a basketball player. I don't have the height. I don't have the skill set. I would love to be, but it's not in my cards. So I think if you're going to make that risk, you're going to take that leap, you're going to try to follow your dream, also have in the back of your mind that if you're not making it, if you're not progressing, don't, don't have pride ruin it. Say to yourself, I tried. I didn't do it. I'm not making it. Let me go back and maybe do it halfway or maybe do it on the side. There's nothing wrong with, tr you did something that most people won't do. You, you risked it, but also have the sense to step back and go, okay, you know what? Maybe this ain't going to happen for me. I need to still have a career or make or have a job and then do it on the side. But right. take that risk, man. I, I, would, I would hate myself if I didn't try. You asked me one time. Yeah, yeah don't start? even start. Remember when you start? Don't even start. You give typical off the boat. No, no. Dad, no, no. you're going to make him money. He gives advice <laughs> that saves him from getting blamed if I fail. No, 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 no. What would he say? I he, said to him, I said, let me, let me do it. Oh, no, you can say it. Because I'll fact check him. you. Again. He asked me, he says, Dad, uh, I want to be a comedy. I want to do <laughs> He wants to make cameos. Can, I want to be a comedy. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> so I, I said to him, I says, you're not, you're a smart boy. You want to try? Go ahead. You don't waste anything to try. Maybe you can make it. Maybe you cannot make it. If you cannot make it, it's the same thing he says. You can go and find another job. That's it. Yeah, kind I, of. I told him to give it a shot. Kind of. That's it. You protected yourself from getting blamed. No, no, I'm not protecting he myself. Goes, I nothing. said, Dad, I said, listen, I said, I spoke to mommy. I said, Because you were smart enough I said, to do what mom, he mom, to do. You know, my mom told me the same thing. My mom, you know, she said, try it. But you have a family to take care of. So be smart. If it doesn't happen... Make sure you have money in the bank to take care of the bills. And if it doesn't happen, make sure you can go back to work and get a job. I asked him. He said, I think it's a good idea, man. You're funny. You're making people laugh. He said, dude, go ahead and try. You're not going to know if you not try. But you better have a medical insurance. I mean, God forbid something happen. And if you not do, if you fail, if, you not, if this is not work, you better go get a job because I'm not going to help you. Okay, but you got to try. But if you fail, you not tell tell people your father said do because I told you both ways. If you do, try. If you not do, you fail. Not coming to me because I don't help you. So remember, think of that. Remember that. Put that in your head. If you not work out, your father never told you to do it. That's it. I'm like, you okay. Tough. Tough. You I'm at square one. That's tough. Right? Love. You yeah. did work hard. Yeah. 
I don't know if those words were. I don't know if they were encouraging. Dude, I had the boxing match in March, and he gave me a pep talk. He yeah, goes, how did that go, by the way? I, it was good, man. The, listen, for anybody that Come boxes. Come back or what? Huh? Come back or what? I would do it again. Uh, the training is so hard, man. No, nah, I, I, I have respect for all the people that, that box. I didn't know how hard the training was. There's a lot of stamina, breathing. I, I didn't know if you went in the ring and you tense up. That, like... Wastes a lot of energy and, and strength. You got to be loose. You got to breathe. I couldn't breathe by the third round. I did well. I held my own. Um, the kid was like, dude, how did you come in with so much anger? I said, well, well, how old are you? He's like 29. I said, are you single? Are you married? He goes, no, I'm single. I was like, dude, I'm married with two kids and my mother lives up, my mother-in-law lives up the street. You, you can't, you, know. you can't be on my level of anger. I'm angry every day. My mother lives across the street. Yeah, dude. My mother-in-law lives up the street. I got two young kids and a wife that's called Brace. I'm pressured every day. So I came in the ring. First round, you were my wife. Second round, you were my mother-in-law. Third round, you were a double-headed monster. I said, that's where I came out of. It's not easy. But boxing. He not says easy. to me, uh, like two days before the match, he goes, you. Are you really going to do this? You're going to fight? I don't think you should do this, Anthony. I said, why, Dad? I want to try to do it. But you already do comedy. You make it ready. What if, God forbid, you go in the ring and this guy hit you in the head with something a move? That's the Italian way, of, oh, Italian way of saying brain damage. He hits you in the head, something a move. Nah, you cannot talk. You like, d -d 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 you study all the time. You cannot do comedy. Who's going to pay for my truck? Nah, I got to pay for my truck. Who's going to pay for my truck? Holy shit. Now, I knew what he meant. He said, God forbid you get hurt and you can't do comedy. Yeah. You love helping your family. Yeah, yeah. But he has such a hard way of putting yeah, it. Who's going to pay for my truck? It's He's getting straight to the facts. 100%. I don't want to get a repossession. God forbid yeah, that my yeah, truck again, a repossession. You know, you know. I see trucks not going to get repoed. You know I want you to do 100%. Yes. The amount of the truck and bullshit. I love I when they do that, care. too. Your family does that? Mix Italian and English 50-50? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I make it things different ways. I know what I mean. Sometimes you're the only one that knows. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only me. Well, I want to go back to know. Savino's point. 2024, what, what yeah. are you guys changing this year? Yeah. So uh, once the special comes out, my entire hour changes. Um, you know, I, I mean... It's your resolution. In that sense, you know, my resolution. That was the first question of the pod, by the way. <laughs> I don't think it's an Yeah, no, dude, no. I mean, listen, the best podcasts are the ones that just flow. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, you're right. That question was never asked. <laughs> I uh, never answered, and uh, we just didn't shut the hell up. Um, my father's still thinking about his. I wonder what I want to do. So, all right, I'll ask you first. What, what, what's your New Year's resolution? What do you want to do different in 2024? I want you... No, no, for you. For me? Yeah. I want to be healthy. I want my family to get healthy. My grandkids, first of all. Right. And my brother, all my family, I want to be healthy. Okay. I have a good New Year's. So your story. resolution is health. Health and happiness. So That's a beautiful answer. You're going to stop eating carbs and cake because you got diabetes? Uh, I try already because you can see I lost the weight. Right. You, you lost weight because you're on Ozempic. <laughs> what do you want me to do? That's what the doctor gave it to me. Right. It works. My diabetes. It works. He tells me it my, works. my sugar to 120. Uh, you know what I got to do? I got to promise you I would do it. Right. I got it. You're on the podcast. Stay away. Yes. I, it, that's why I said that. Listen, listen. No, no. Are, that's why I said that. You got to keep I your talk. word. I'm, I hear I can say the truth. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm not lying to you. What I want to do, I want to try to stay where for bread. That's Good what luck. kills me. As I was just about to see if you that's wanted a sandwich. That's what kills me <laughs> most. Yes. That's what kills me a lot. The bread. Yeah. And you because know what? I'm proud of you for saying that because it took me a while to convince you. He thought I was lying. I go, Dad, you can't have bread. He goes... Anthony, diabetes is because of sugar. I'm not having sugar. You don't put, it, put sugar on bread. I said, bread is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates yes. breaks down into sugar. Yeah. He and goes, I, I think you bullshit to me because you don't want me to eat the bread. And then he looked it up. I got so to get used to it. I'm proud of you for actually believing it. Stay away for the sweet. Yes. Mm -hmm. What I did, I did a something of myself a couple of weeks ago. I pick it up and I put it in a container. You know the, the cake with the, with the pastette, the biscotti? Yeah. I make that and I make it my home pasta cream. Okay. Your own what? Pasta bo cream? Buster Buster cream. cream. Buster cream. Oh, Buster cream. cream. I thought he said prostate cream. Well, I have prostate mm, cream. Yeah, that's what you right? think all the time. <laughs> you think of all the I'm making way. my own prostate no, no, cream. I did it my own. I don't want no dessert. Prostate <laughs> cream. No, no, I do my own things too. I got, Can I, got, I interest you in a piece of prostate <laughs> cream pie? <laughs> you want some prostate cream pie? So, well, as soon as I touch that, uh -huh. I see the difference. I eat it that afternoon or that yesterday. 
Uh-huh. And I'm never going to touch him again. My diabetes morning, it was at 224. What? Yeah. Even on medication, it's high, God, dude. Even on medication because I eat a little piece of cake. Yeah, yeah. Right? I see the difference. Fucking sweat. And now, right now, I say the truth because everybody can hear me. Oh, God. I got to oh, try. Cut down on the try. bread. I yeah. got to try. Eat, eat, you know, I started, I got to start to stay away for carbs. Yeah. That's okay. what kills It's the good hardest carbs. thing for Italians. Good resolution. Yes. Good resolution. At the carbs. bread. You understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the Italian people bread the curry. Everything, everything. Yes. Come on, everything's better. Pasta. Bread. Yeah. Before I used to eat the big plate pasta. So, a little Andy, bit about like what's this, your resolution? No Before we jump I have to the top. Um, real quick, because I don't want to forget this. They have keto bread. That Is he keto bread? No, they, they, like Arnold's makes a keto yeah. bread. Smaller slice, but it tastes. Dude, they, they should, I don't know if they have it. They should make Italian keto bread. Same way they make that bread, just make Italian keto bread. And we'll complain about it. We will, but I, I need bread, dude. Uh, all right, so just so we don't go another hour and a half. Um, my New Year's resolution. Um, I'm not going to say work harder because I, I, I don't stop. Um, my New Year's resolution is to shut it off once in a while. I like um, that. I got to learn how to do that, too. I, I, I And you know what, man? Um... I go home, there's times I'm up till 3 o'clock in the morning, I get an idea, I go in the basement, I write it down, I work on a new sketch, I work on a new bit for the stage. But um, my kids are 8 and 3, and I missed probably 4 or 5 years of my daughter's life because I would leave my house at 7 a.m. when I was working a regular job, and I would be home at 9. I was off Tuesdays and Sundays, so the rest of the days, I would leave the house while she was sleeping, and I would come home when she was sleeping. And I missed four years of that. You know, I never went trick-or-treating with her because the last day of the month of the car dealership, I was always working. So now, even though I'm, I'm you know, there's some weekends where I'm, I leave the house on Thursday and I fly to another state and I come home on Sunday, I'm still home a lot more than I was. Like, you know, I'm off until the 27th now. Um, I have a week and a half off. They're coming with me to Florida for two weeks. Um, but when you're a parent and, and you, you have kids, you'll understand, you blink your eye Two years go by. You know, I look at my, my son. My son's going to be, you know, four years old. And my daughter's like a little woman already at eight. And there's times where, don't get me wrong, I love the life I'm able to give them. And, and you know, my fans make that possible. And I thank them all the time. But I'll sit down and I'll watch videos of my kids, dude. I get so upset. It's happy tears, but it's also, you know, you realize I don't give a shit how much money you make in this world. I don't care if you're a millionaire or a billionaire. No matter how rich you are, you're never going to be able to buy more time or you're never going to be able to go back in time. And my New Year's resolution is to shut it the fuck off sometimes. When I'm home, put my phone aside for two, three, four hours. Forget about the emails that come through. Forget about the shows that I'm booking. Forget about doing another video. My fans will be there. I'll give my fans what they want. But give your family first and your fans second. Whatever business you're in, your job, give your job second. Always put your family first because you can't go back. And once you lose that time, that's it. So watching my kids this year especially because my son, you know, he started talking a lot. And my daughter's just coming into her own. Um, I don't want to miss that. So 2024, yes, I want to be as big as I possibly can be in comedy. But I want to give my kids and my family a lot more time. So That's just, love just that turn it love off. That turn it whether it's an hour, two hours. Put more time into your family. That's what I'm going to oh, yeah. do for 24. Yeah. Not to get like yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Love that. Oh, <laughs> held back the tears there, all of it. Mm, That's my special little boy. Uh, honestly, mine's the same as both of them. A little bit of each. Health and family. Um, perfectly said. I. Can't say. It better can't follow that. that up. Any better. I can't say it better than that. I give no. good speeches. What about you, Rock? <laughs> I just want to be. I'm happy right now, but I just want to be in a happy... I don't want to, like, have any hatred or envy towards anybody. Stay in my own lane, focus on what I'm doing, what we're building, and just be happy with what we have and keep building, you know? Yeah, I mean, listen, I say it all the time, man. Uh, You need haters. If you don't have haters, you're not as big as you want to be. But at the same time, don't put too much concentration on the people that hate because they're hating because either they want to be where you're at, so that's a good thing, or they're just miserable people to begin with and they wake up every day looking at life from a negative standpoint. So it's not even worth, you know, paying attention to them. And I'm saying this as I go online and just answer back the negative comments. <laughs> yeah. Like people are like, why do, you, why do you concentrate on the negative comments? Why don't you just concentrate on the people that love your comedy and praise you? I go, because I'm Italian and I enjoy confrontation. Exactly. You know? I'll get 95 comments. Loved your show, loved your show, loved your video, one loved bad your show. One, you- one guy goes, your comedy sucks. 
Yeah, bro. Yeah, my comedy sucks. What about your double chin in your picture? What about the fact that the back of your neck looks like a pack of hot dogs? Oh, you're a cat owner. That must be masculine. <laughs> Just, I go off on him. And Michelle's like, what are you doing? I'm like, this son of a bitch said my shit wasn't funny. <laughs> and uh, I, I like that, man. Concentrate yeah. on, just worry about, you know, making yourself better and just don't even don't even pay any attention to the negativity. Listen, if you're watching those, this from those home. Those people you're talking about, they don't, they don't believe the family. They don't know how to have a good light and go with a good laugh. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, make, and make you happy himself. They don't, they don't know. Absolutely. Coming That's from real. a guy that, you know, took me about 37 years to see you laugh for the first time. I'm glad you <laughs> laugh now, man. Yeah. Like you have now. <laughs> Listen, let's wish everybody a happy new year. If you're yes, with your family. That's it. Enjoy the time with and your I, family. We all can work that, on can't ourselves. Can't get that time back. back. Can never exactly. get it back. Thank so. you to both of you. Thank you for coming from all the way from you're upstate. Welcome. We I, appreciate I very, it. I very enjoy myself. We had a great time. We had a great yes, time. Yes. And yes, a happy new year yes. to you guys. I as hope well. we could do. We we'll do it again. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's Whatever way, you want. Yeah. That's his way of going. You guys are better have him back. Well, Anthony might be too big by then. You know. I'm no, Andy, I'm, I Andy's feel very, a text very away. happy. I no. like your company today, and I like the time that we spend. The one one thing about me, dude, and I told this I to like Sabino. That's nice knowing you, bro. Serious. No, one, <laughs> I, I told this to Sabino from day one, man. There, there are places that I perform at. There's people that I associate with that I'm very loyal. I was raised, you know, to always be humble. You know, don't ever, he always tell me, don't ever spit up in the air. Because it's always going to land on the yeah, Exactly. That's right. So, and that's true. The mm-hmm. people that stuck around me when I when I didn't have a name or when I my name wasn't where it was, those are the people that I don't care, man. I don't give a shit if I'm selling out Madison Square Garden. You guys call me. I'll jump on. I have comedy clubs that they're like, oh, see you, see you. I'll see you at a big show. You're never going to come back here. And I come back. And they're like, I didn't think you were going to come back this year. I'm like, why? I, I'll do seven shows here and I'll make the same money that I'm making doing one show. That's seven different shows and people that can afford to come here. And you guys treated me like gold when I first started, when I was a nobody. I didn't have a name. I didn't have a draw. I didn't have people coming, you know, in the thousands. So why shouldn't I come back? Why should mm-hmm. I turn my back on you when you didn't do that to me yeah. when I was younger? That's so I, real. I mean, listen, I mean, you know, I'll be able to say I told you so next year and the year after that. But always stay humble, man. Don't ever think you're too big for, you know, for the people that were there because what's going to happen is, you know, Goomba Johnny tells me this all the time. So I tour with him. He was on KTU radio. He was huge. He had a great morning show. He always said it, man. He goes, when I was on the radio, I could not stop my phone from ringing. My phone was ringing nonstop. And now that I haven't been on the radio, I can't get some people to actually pick up my call. And it could be gone as quick as it came. We're actually gonna yeah, have so Goomba on the, the podcast. People. He'll be on the he, show. Let me tell you so. something. He's got a lot. He's got a great life, man. Yeah. He's got a lot to say. A lot of it's funny. Some of it's not. But he's got an amazing story, dude. I mean, the shit that guy went through, it, it's amazing. I'm glad that I have him kind of in my corner to kind of steer me around some of the bullshit. But uh, yeah, man, whatever you built for yourself, the shit could be gone tomorrow. So don't you know? Don't forget the people that were there when you started. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank you guys again. And uh, yeah. Yeah, Happy yeah, New was, Year. Was, was Happy New Year, everybody. Don't forget to eat your lentil and put on your red uh, <laughs> European underwear. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>